हेलो एवरीवन वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल बीट द नीट और फाइनली मैं आ गई हूँ लेकर के आप सभी के लिए फिजिक्स ऑडियो बुक बच्चों आप लोगों की इतनी रिक्वेस्ट आई फिजिक्स ऑडियो बुक बनाने के लिए लेकिन मुझे इसे बनाने में काफ़ी डिफिकल्ट लग रहा था क्योंकि फिजिक्स ऑडियो बुक बनाना आपको बहुत सारे फॉर्मूलाज हैं डेरीवेशन्स हैं बहुत सारी चीज़ें हैं तो मैंने स्टार्ट तो कर दी हैं अब देखते हैं कि आप लोग कैसा इसको रिस्पांस देते हैं कितना आप लोग इसको शेयर करते हैं कितना आप लोग इसे लाइक करते हैं मुझे कमेंट सेक्शन पे ज़रूर बताइएगा उसी के बाद मैं बाकी के सारे चैप्टर्स भी बनाऊंगी तो आज मैं जो स्टार्ट कर रही हूँ वो आपके जो मोस्ट थियोरेटिकल चैप्टर्स हैं उनसे स्टार्ट कर रही हूँ और आज जो है हमारा ये क्लास ट्वेल्थ पार्ट टू चैप्टर फोर्टीन सेमी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मटीरियल्स डिवाइस एंड सिंपल सर्किट्स इस चैप्टर से शुरू कर रहे हैं और आगे धीरे धीरे करके हम इसके लगभग सारे ही चैप्टर्स को कवर करेंगे सो so, चलिए स्टार्ट करते हैं इंट्रोडक्शन डिवाइस इन विच कंट्रोल्ड फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कैन बी ऑप्टेंड आर द बेसिक बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स ऑफ ऑल द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किट्स बिफोर द डिस्कवरी ऑफ ट्रांजिस्टर इन 1848, फोर्टी एट सच डिवाइस वर मोस्टली वैक्यूम ट्यूब्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड वॉल्व लाइक द वैक्यूम डायोड विच हैज टू इलेक्ट्रोड एनोड often called plate and cathode triode which has three electrodes cathode plate and grid tetrode and pentode respectively with four and five electrodes in a vacuum tube the electrons are supplied by a heated cathode and controlled flow of these electrons in vacuum is obtained by varying the voltage between its different electrodes vacuum is required in the inner electrode space otherwise the moving electrons may lose their energy on collision with the air molecules in their path in these devices these electrons can flow only from the cathode to anode that is only in one direction therefore such devices are generally referred to as valves these vacuum tube devices are bulky consume high power and operate generally at high voltages that is approximately 100 volt and have limited life and low reliability The seed of the development of modern solid state con- semiconductor electronic goes back to 1930s when it was realized that some solid state semiconductors and their junctions offer the possibility of controlling the number and the direction of flow of charge carriers through them. Simple excitations like light, heat or small applied voltage can change the number of mobile charges in a semiconductor. Note that the supply and flow of charge carriers in the semiconductor devices are within the solid itself while in the earlier vacuum tubes valves the mobile electrons were obtained from a heated cathode and they were made to flow in an evacuated space or vacuum no external heating or large evacuated space is required by the semiconductor devices they are small in size consume low power operate at low voltages and have long life and high reliability even the cathode ray tube crt used in television and computer monitors which work on the principle of vacuum tubes are being replaced by liquid crystal display that is lcd monitors with supporting solid state electronics much before the full implications of the semiconductor devices was formally understood a naturally occurring crystal of galena that is lead sulfide pbs with a metal point contact attached to it was used as detector of radio waves in the following sections we will introduce the basic concepts of semiconductor physics and discuss some semiconductor devices like junction diodes a two electrode device and a bipolar junction transistor a three electrode device a few circuits illustrating their applications will also be described 14.2 classification of metals conductors and semiconductors on the basis of conductivity on the basis of the relative values of electrical conductivity or resistivity rho is equals to 1 upon sigma the solids are broadly classified as number 1 metals they possesses very low resistivity or high conductivity rho is approximately 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter and uh, sigma is approximately 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 8 number 2 semiconductors they have resistivity or conductivity intermediate to metals and insulators here you can see the values for the rho and sigma number 3 insulators they have high resistivity or low conductivity and here you can see the value for rho and sigma the values of rho and sigma above are indicative of magnitude and could will go out 
side the ranges as well relative values of the resistivity are not the only criteria for distinguishing metals insulators and semiconductors from each other there are some other differences which will become clear as we go along in this chapter our interest in this chapter is in the study of semiconductors which could be number 1 elemental semiconductors si and ge silicon and germanium number 2 compound semiconductors examples are in organic cds gac as and cdsc and inp etc organic you can see here anthracene doped thalocyanins etc and organic polymers are poly pyrrole and polyaniline and uh, polythiophene etc most of the currently available semiconductor devices are based on elemental semiconductors silicon or germanium and compound in organic semiconductors however after 1990 a few semiconductor devices using organic semiconductors and semiconducting polymers have been developed signaling by the birth of a futuristic technology of polymer electronics and molecular electronics in this chapter we will restrict ourselves to the study of an organic semiconductors particularly elemental semiconductor silicon and germanium the general concepts introduced here for discussing the elemental semiconductors by and large apply to most of the compound semiconductors as well on the basis of energy bands according to the bohr atomic model in an isolated atom the energy of any of its electron is decided by the orbit in which it revolves but when the atoms come together to form a solid they are close to each other so the outer orbits of electrons from neighboring atoms would come very close or could even overlap this would make the nature of electrons motion in a solid very different from that in an isolated atom inside the crystal each electron has a unique position and no two electrons see exactly the same pattern of surrounding charges because of this each electron will have a different energy level these different energy levels with continuous energy variations form what are called energy bands the energy band which includes the energy levels of the valence electrons is called the valence band the energy band above the valence electron is called the valence band and the energy band above the valence band is called the conduction band with no external energy all the valence electrons will reside in the valence band if the lowest energy value if the lowest level in the conduction band happens to be lower than the highest level of the valence band the electrons from the valence band can easily move into the conduction band normally the conduction band is empty but when it overlaps on the valence band electrons can move freely into it this is the case with metallic conductors if there is some gap between the conduction band and the valence band electrons in the valence band all remain bound and no free electrons are available in the conduction band this makes the material an insulator but some of the electrons from the valence band may gain external energy to cross the gap between the conduction band and the valence band then these electrons will move into the conduction band at the same time they will create vacant energy levels in the valence band where other valence electrons can move thus the process creates the possibility of conduction due to electrons in conduction band as well as due to vacancies in the valence band Let us consider what happens in the case of silicon or germanium crystal containing nitrogen atoms. For silicon the outermost orbit is the third orbit n is equals to 3 while for germanium it is the fourth orbit n is equals to 4. The number of electrons in the outermost orbit is 4, 2s and 2p electrons. Hence the total number of outer electrons in the crystal is 4n. The maximum possible number of electrons in the outer orbit is 8, 2s plus 6p electrons. So for the 4n valence electron there are 8n available energy states these 8n discrete energy levels can either form a continuous band or they may be grouped in different bands depending upon the distance between the atoms in the crystal see box on band theory of solids at the distance between the atoms in the crystal lattices of silicon and germanium the energy band of these 8n states is split apart into two which are separated by an energy gap eg figure 14.1 the lower band which is completely occupied by the 4n valence electron at temperature of absolute zero is the valence band the other band consisting of 4n energy states called the conduction band is completely empty at absolute zero here you can see the band theory of solids consider that the silicon or germanium crystal contains nitrogen atoms 
Electrons of each atom will have discrete energies in different orbits. The electron energy will be same if all the atoms are isolated that is separated from each other by a large distance. However, in a crystal the atoms are close to each other that is 2 to 3 angstrom and therefore the electron interact with each other and also with the neighboring atomic cores. The overlap or interaction will be more felt by the electrons in the outermost orbit while the inner orbit or core electron energies may remain unaffected. Therefore, for understanding electron energies in silicon or germanium crystal, we need to consider the changes in the energies of the electrons in the outermost orbit only. For silicon, the outermost orbit is the third orbit n is equals to 3, while for germanium it is the fourth orbit n is equals to 4. The number of electrons in the outermost orbit is 4, 2s and 2p electrons. Hence, the total number of outer electrons in the crystal is 4n. The maximum possible number of outer electrons in the orbit is 8, 2s plus 6p electrons. So, out of the 4n electrons, 2n electrons are in the 2ns state. Orbital quantum number L equals to 0 and 2n electrons are in the available 6n p states. Obviously, some p electron states are empty shown in the extreme right of the figure. Here you can see the figure. Suppose these atoms start coming nearer to each other to form a solid, the energies of these electrons in the outermost orbit may change, both increase and decrease due to the interaction between the electrons of different atoms. The 6n states for L is equals to 1 which originally had identical energies in the isolated atoms is spread out and form an energy band region B in figure. Similarly, the two n states for L is equals to 0 having identical energies in the isolated atoms split into a second band. Carefully see the region B for figure. Separated from the first one by an energy gap. At a still smaller spacing, however, there comes a region in which the bands merge with the each other. In this region, no energy gap exists where the upper and lower energy states get mixed. Finally, if the distance between the atoms further decreases, the energy bands again split apart and are separated by an energy gap e.g. region D in figure, the total number of available energy states 8n has been reapportioned between the two, two bands. 4n states each in the lower and upper energy bands. Here the significant point is that there are exactly as many states in the lower band 4n as there are available valence electrons from the atoms 4n. Therefore, this band called the valence band is completely filled while the upper band is completely empty and the upper band is called the conduction band. I am showing you the diagram one more time. The lowest energy level in the conduction band is shown as EC and highest energy level in the valence band is shown as EV. Above EC and below EV there are a large number of closely spaced energy levels as shown in figure 14.1. Here you can see the figure. The gap between the top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band is called the energy band gap that is energy gap EG. It may be large, small or zero depending upon the material. These different situations are depicted in figure 14.2 and discussed below. Case 1. This refers to a situation as shown in figure 14.2a. One can have a metal either when the conduction band is partially filled and the balanced band is partially empty or when the conduction and valence bands overlap. When there is overlap, electrons from valence band can easily move into the conduction band. This situation makes a large number of electrons available for electron co electrical conduction. When the balance band is partially empty, Electrons from its lower level can move to higher level making conduction possible. Therefore, the resistance of such materials is low or the conductivity is high. Here you can see the figure 14.1, the energy band position in a semiconductor at 0k. The upper band called the conduction band contains of infinitely large number of closely spaced energy states. The lower band called the valence band consists of closely spaced completely filled energy states. Now you can see uh, figure 14.2 there is a difference between energy bands of A metals and B insulators and C semiconductors. Case 2. In this case as shown in figure 14.2b a large band gap e.g. exists. 
e.g. is greater than 3 electron volt. There are no electrons in the conduction band and therefore no electrical conduction is possible. Note that the energy gap is so large that electrons cannot be excited from the valence band to the conduction band by thermal excitation. This is the case of insulators. Case third, this situation is shown in figure 14.2 here a finite but a small band gap e.g. is less than 3 electron volt exists. Because of the small band gap, at room temperature some electrons from valence band can acquire enough energy to cross the energy gap and enter the conduction band. These electrons, though small in numbers, can move in the conduction band, hence the resistance of semiconductors is not as high as that of the insulators. In this section, we have made a broad classification of metals, conductors and semiconductors. In this section, we have made a broad classification of metals, conductors and semiconductors. In the section which follows, you will learn the conduction process in semiconductors. 14.3 Intrinsic Semiconductor we shall take the most common case of germanium and silicon whose lattice structure is shown in figure 14.3. These structures are called diamond-like structures. Each atom is surrounded by four nearest neighbors. We know that silicon and germanium have four valence electrons. In its crystalline structure, every silicon or germanium tends to share one of its four valence electrons with each of its four nearest neighbor atoms and also to take share of one electron from each such neighbor. These shared electron pairs are referred to as forming a covalent bond or simply a valence bond. The two shared electrons can be assumed to shuttle back and forth between the associated atoms holding them together strongly. Figure 14.4 schematically shows the two-dimensional representation of silicon or germanium structure in figure 14.3 which overemphasizes the covalent bond. It shows an idealized picture in which no bonds are broken, all bonds are intact. Such a situation arises at low temperatures. As the temperature increases, more thermal energy becomes available to these electrons and some of these electrons may break away, becoming free electrons contributing to conduction. The thermal energy effectively ionizes only a few atoms in the crystalline lattice and creates a vacancy in the bond as shown in figure 14.5a. The neighborhood from which the free electron with charge Q has some out leaves a vacancy with an effective charge plus Q. Mm. This vacancy with the effective positive electric charge is called a hole. The hole behaves as an apparent free particle with effective positive charge. In intrinsic semiconductors, the number of free electrons Ne is equal to the number of holes NH. That is Ne is equal to NH is equal to Ni. Where Ni is called the intrinsic carrier concentration. Semiconductors possess the unique property in which apart from electrons the holes also move. Suppose there is a hole at a site 1 as shown in figure 14.5a the movement of holes can be visualized as shown in figure 14.5b. An electron from the covalent bond at site 2 may jump to vacant site 1 thus after such a jump the hole it at site 2 and the site 1 has now an electron. Therefore, apparently the hole has moved from site 1 to site 2. Note that the electron originally set free is not involved in the process of hole motion. The free electron moves completely independently as conduction electron and gives rise to an electron current IE under an applied electric field. Remember that the motion of hole is only a convenient way of describing the actual, actual motion of bound electrons. Whenever there is an empty bond anywhere in the crystal under the action of an electric field, these holes move towards negative potential giving the hole current IH. The total current I is thus the sum of the electron current IE and the hole current IH. I is equals to IE plus IH. It may be noted that apart from processes of generation of conduction electrons and holes, a simultaneous process of recombination occurs in which the electrons recombine with the holes. At equilibrium, the rate of generation is equal to the rate of recombination of charge carriers. The recombination occurs due to an electron colliding with a hole. Here you can see the 14.5 A and B.
An intrinsic semiconductor will behave like an insulator at T is equals to 0 Kelvin as shown in figure 14.6a. It is a thermal energy at higher temperature T is greater than 0 Kelvin, which excites some electron from the valence band to the conduction band. These thermally excited electrons at T greater than 0 Kelvin partially occupy the conduction band. Therefore, the energy band diagram of an intrinsic semiconductor will be as shown in figure 14.6b. Here, you can see the diagram. Here some electrons are shown in the conduction band and these have come from the valence band leaving equal number of holes here. You can see here the 14.6A diagram and 14.6B. 14.4 Extrinsic Semiconductor the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor depends on its temperature but at room temperature its conductivity is very low. As such, no important electronic devices can be developed using these semiconductors. Hence, there is a necessity of improving their conductivity. This can be done by making use of impurities. When a small amount, say a few parts per million of a suitable impurity is added to the pure semiconductor, the conductivity of the semiconductor is increased manifold. Such materials are known as extrinsic semiconductors or impurity semiconductors. The deliberate addition of a desirable impurity is called doping and the impurity atoms are called dopants. Such a material is also called a doped semiconductor. The dopant has to be such that it does not distort the original pure semiconductor lattice. It occupies only a very few of the original semiconductor atom sites in the crystal. A necessary condition to attain this that the size of the dopant and the semiconductor atom should be nearly the same. There are two types of dopants used in doping the tetravalent silicon or germanium. Number one, pentavalent, valency 5 like arsenic, antimony, phosphorus, etc. Number two, trivalent, valency 3 like indium, boron, aluminium, etc. We shall now discuss how the doping changes the number of charge carriers and hence the conductivity of semiconductors. Silicon or germanium belongs to the fourth group in the periodic table and therefore we choose the dopant element from nearby fifth or third group, expecting and taking care that the size of the dopant atom is nearly the same as that of silicon or germanium. Interestingly, the pentavalent and trivalent dopants in silicon or germanium give two entirely different types of semiconductors as discussed below. Number 1. N-type semiconductor Suppose we dope silicon or germanium with a pentavalent element as shown in figure 14.7. When an atom of plus 5 valency element occupies a position of an atom in the crystal lattice of silicon, four of its electrons bond with the four silicon neighbors while the fifth remains very weakly bound to its apparent atom. This because the four electrons participating in bonding are seen as a part of the effective core of the atom by the fifth electron. As a result, the ionization energy required to set this electron free is very small and even at room temperature it will be free to move in the lattice of the semiconductor. For example, the energy required is approximately 0.01 electron volt for germanium and 0.05 electron volt for silicon to separate this electron from its atom. This is in contrast to the energy required to jump for the forbidden band that is about 0.72 electron volt for germanium and about 1.1 electron volt for silicon at room temperature in the intrinsic semiconductor. Thus the pentavalent dopant is donating one extra electron for conduction and hence is known as donor impurity. The number of electrons made available for the conduction of dopant atoms depends strongly upon the doping level and is independent of any increase in ambient temperature. On the other hand, the number of free electrons with an equal number of holes generated by silicon atoms increases weakly with temperature. In a doped semiconductor, the total number of conduction electrons and E is due to the electrons contributed by donors and those generated intrinsically, while the total number of holes and H is only due to the holes from the intrinsic source. But the rate of recombination of holes would increase due to the increase in the number of electrons. As a result, the number of holes would get reduced further. Thus, with proper level of doping, the number of conduction electrons can be made much larger than the number of holes. Hence, in an extrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity, electrons become the majority carriers and the holes the minority carriers. 
these semiconductors are therefore known as n type semiconductors for n type semiconductors we are having n e is greater than very very greater than n n number 2 p type semiconductor this is obtained when silicon or germanium is doped with a trivalent impurity like aluminium boron indium etc the dopant has one valence electron less than silicon or germanium and therefore this atom can form covalent bonds with neighboring three si atoms but does not have any electron to offer to the fourth si atom so the bond between the fourth neighbor and the trivalent atom has a vacancy or hole as shown in figure 14.8 you can see here since the neighboring silicon atom in the lattice wants an electron in place of hole an electron in the outer orbit of an atom in the neighborhood may jump to fill this vacancy leaving a vacancy or hole at its own side thus the hole is available for conduction note that the trivalent foreign atom becomes effectively negatively charged when it shares fourth electron when neighboring si atom therefore the dopant atom of p type material can be treated as core of one negative charge along with its associated hole as shown in figure 14.8 b it is obvious that one acceptor atom gives one hole these holes are in addition to the intrinsically generated holes while the source of conduction electrons is only intrinsic generation thus for such a material the holes are the majority carriers and electrons and minority carriers therefore extrinsic semiconductors doped with trivalent impurity are called p type semiconductors for p type semiconductors the recombination process will reduce the number of intrinsically generated electrons to any we have for p type semiconductors nh is greater greater than ne note that crystal maintains an overall charge neutrality as the charge of additional charge carriers is just equal and opposite to that of the ionized cores in the lattice in extrinsic semiconductors because of the abundance of majority current carriers the minority carriers produced thermally have more chance of meeting majority carriers and thus getting destroyed hence the dopant by adding a large number of current carriers of one type which become the majority carriers indirectly helps to reduce the intrinsic concentration of minority carriers the semiconductor's energy band structure is affected by doping in the case of extrinsic semiconductor's additional energy states due to donor impurities ed and acceptor impurities ea also exist in the energy band diagram of n type si semiconductor the donor energy level ed is slightly below the bottom ec of the conduction band and electrons from this level move into the conduction band with very small supply of energy at room temperature most of the donor atoms get ionized but very few approximately 10 to the power 12 atoms of si get ionized so the conduction band will have most electrons coming from the donor impurities as shown in figure 14.9 a similarly for p type semiconductor the acceptor energy level ea is slightly above the top ev of the valence band as shown in figure 14.9 b with very small supply of energy an electron from the valence band can jump to the level ea and ionize the acceptor negatively alternatively we can also say that with very small supply of energy the hole from level ea sinks down into the valence band electrons rise up and holes fall down when they gain external energy at room temperature most of the acceptor atoms get ionized leaving holes in the valence band thus at room temperature the density of holes in the valence band is predominantly due to impurity in the extrinsic semiconductor the electron and hole concentration in a semiconductor in thermal equilibrium is given by nenh is equals to ni whole square though the above description is grossly approximately and uh, hypothetical and it helps in understanding the difference between metals insulators and semiconductors that is extrinsic and intrinsic in a simple manner the difference in the resistivity of carbon silicon and germanium depends upon the energy gap between their conduction and valence band for carbon diamond silicon and germanium the energy gaps are 5.4 electron volt 1.1 electron volt and 0.7 electron volt respectively sn also has sn also is a group 4 element but it is a metal because the energy gap in its case is 0 electron volt here you can see figure 14.9 energy bands of n type semiconductor at t is equal greater than 0 kelvin and p type semiconductor at t greater than 0 kelvin